Praise the Lord. Are you fine? Are you okay? Hallelujah. It's a great pleasure. The Lord give us an opportunity to be this, this time in this place. And uh, we pray the Lord. My name is Abtamu Jacob, and uh, there is also a wonderful guest here. I will invite Lydia to come because we are together. We come from Ethiopia for the mission. So I will give her a time for just uh, introducing herself and describing something. Buana uh, Sefiwe. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I'm Lydia Gurma from Ethiopia. I think now I'm half Ethiopia, half Kenya. <laughs> so I'm so happy to be with you. It's a good time. I hope that give us a good time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are so grateful. We have a wonderful time in Kenya and uh, we join with different kinds of peoples and having a good time to spending within God's kingdom. So we are so grateful. Uh, let us pray and uh, let us go to the scripture about the word of God. Father Jesus, we are so grateful this night. I pray, Father, open the heavens so that we can hear your voice. We can hear your voice in our heart and teach us and show us your way, Father Jesus. And open the door of the Spirit that he give us a wisdom and revelation on your word. We pray and we believe in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So today on the scripture of Ephesians, we want to see about thanksgiving prayer. Uh, last Thursday, pastor described about a lot of uh, efficiency about the book, uh, introduction and activity, how Paul writes this marvelous and wonderful book so that I don't go in that description. But starting from 15 verse, we want to deal about the prayer that Paul was written in prayer for that uh, particular church, the Ephesians church. So, you see, in the, in, the, in the conclusion of the chapter 1, in the whole just book of Ephesians, see, we can't just uh, strongly, this book is, when Paul writes this book, is mainly for not for different kinds of currency or challenge in the church, but for the edification of the church. So this book is intended and have a Christian belief system and principles so that the Christian, how they can live their life for the God perspective. So it will include it, we can just conclude it, the whole, like www, that is, it is what work, what the Lord do for us, it was included in the chapter. And what is the responsibility of the Christians? Uh, it was included also in the chapter. And how we keep these kinds of opportunity and the gift of God, uh, how we can keep it so that it is about warfare. So we can summarize it in what particular time. In chapter 1, in chapter one we can see that one of the key contexts, one of the key concepts in chapter 1, I can read it in the Amplify English version in, in, in Ephesians 1, chapter, 9, chapter 1, verse 9. It will say, making known to us the mystery of his will. The mystery of according to his, his good pleasure, which prevents the purpose and set forth in him. For the maturity of time and climate of the age of unified, all things head them up, consuming them in the Christ. Things in the heavens and the earth, things on the earth. So that 
In chapter 1, in verse 9, the Paul emphasized one thing. So that what was the God's perspective and purpose? What God, what if God can see is he want to consume everything that is in the heavens and in the earth. So that the whole picture of God that he can give for the Christians, for the church, he want to conceive, he want to, he want to every time control everything in the heavens and the earth through Christ. So that in this, in chapter 1, it will describe about, so that this chapter from verse, from verse 15 to 25, we divided this, this portion into four. So that the first one is what Paul heard about. Because when, when, when we read in verse 15, for these reasons, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and love for all God's people. So that he heard about, because Paul was writing this letter in the prison. So he heard about two basic things of the Ephesians people. So the first one is, he heard about what they face on the law. And he heard about what kinds of love they have on the, each other for the neighboring. When the Bible says in Matthew 22 and uh, verse 34 up to 14, Jesus said one thing. Hearing Jesus had a silence of uh, Sardis and Pharisees go together, one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Verse 36, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. So Jesus says, this Pharisees ask him about one thing. So teacher, tell us, what is the greatest commandment in the, look of, in the, in the book of laws? And Jesus say, he control everything that is found in the books, in the prophets, in the books, and control one thing. He will say that, love the Lord with God, your God, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second one is, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. So he tells us, so Paul, he heard about their commitment in faith. They trust God on their mind, on their soul, on their heart. They continue loving the Lord and some music and dedicating their life to the Lord. So he can see that because of his reading about Thanksgiving prayer, because he sees that he heard about their commitment and faith on Jesus Christ. And not only that, but also the love of every neighbors each other. So that he says that in this, in Matthew in Matthew 22, so love your neighbor as yourself. So this all commandments and law was doing together. So that because of that, because of that, it was written, it was written intentionally about it. And uh, so that this is the initial point so Paul can write this letter. So he heard about it. So what was Paul pray about? I want to discuss about intentionally. What is the causes and the intensity that Paul discuss about in his prayer? Discuss about in his prayer. So that he is wondering, he's, he's looking and hearing about wonderful things and day and night. He was praying about this church. He's praying about this, this people. About day and night. And asking to God to give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So the main, of, the main aim of wisdom and revelation is to know Christ in deep and intimate way. 
I want to share you about one story. This story has happened in USA. And uh, there is a small congregation, like, like a small congregation church, and it's a lovely pastor there is. And there is one member that he believes in Satanism. And he knows the Bible from the beginning to the end, the end to the beginning. So he, he is continuously messed with that pastor. So that the pastor was so exhausted. So when every time this member come, he would disturb the, the congregation. He challenged different believers and uh, the pastor was confused. And one time the pastor just invited one huge guest, this honorable guest that have a PhD on hermeneutics. So that at that time, the pastor just invite that one because he think that because this the invited guest have PhD in the hermeneutics. So he will answer him whatever the question that I have in the Bible. So he invite this guy and when for your surprise, when he comes, he will miss the invited guest. And even though the invited guest was so, so confused. And he, he want to argue with the pastor, what kinds of members do you have? And the pastor was so sad and he does not know what to do. At that time, there was a girl. She was born again three days before. She was the member, a new member in the church. And at the end of the service, there is a tea time. So this guy, the, 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 he followed the satanism, has communion with her. And the pastor saw him. Because she is a newborn, so she is a new believer. And they, they are so, when the pastor saw them, they confused. The pastor was so worried because he was thinking that this guy can miss her, this, this new born again believers. And uh, after three days, this guy come to the pastor and he say, I want to accept Jesus, my personal savior. And pastor was confused and he want to ask him, why do you want to accept Jesus as personal savior? And he said to the pastor, because of this girl, I know one thing, I understand Jesus perfectly. And the pastor was so amazed because he was thinking, how can she talk to him? How can she talk to this guy and convince him? And he'll go to that lady and ask, the, the pastor ask this lady. And how you can talk to this guy and how you can change him. And uh, this young lady was saying one thing. Pastor, I don't know. He asked me a lot of things. I don't know nothing. But, but I tell him one thing. Brother, I am like, like you. Before three days... I never sleep in my bed. But I know Jesus. And now I sleep like a baby. Can you imagine? Sometimes the sermon cannot change the personal life. But the encounter, the experience of God in person can change some lives. So Paul was writing what is the meaning of revelation and the wisdom. So that the first objective of his prayer is the main aim is of the wisdom and revelation is to know Christ in deep and intimate way. So he was praying for them to have a communion with Jesus. To know Jesus deeply. To know Jesus intensively. The spirit of wisdom and revelation is the, the, the precious Holy Spirit that will come to reveal Jesus explicitly. You know, our Father Jesus, you know, our Father wants to reveal Himself. Our God is not the God that hide himself. Our God is not the God that he complicated things so that anyone can reach him. But our God is so, so love and so clear. 
that anyone has the ability to, to, to know him. To know him. When chap, John chapter 14, he says, All things I spoke while still with you. But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you everything I have said to you. So that Jesus was telling that the Holy Spirit is coming to be a counselor that will show you the way I go. The way I go. In John chapter 16, I have much more, verse 12, much more to say, more than you can have beer. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he heard. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory me to talk from what is mine, making it known to you. So our God is a God of fellowship. So Paul was praying for this community, for this church was, I will pray to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Why? Because you need to be have a fellowship with Christ. A fellowship with Christ. You see, in the Hebrew chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophet at many times in the various way. But in this last day, he spoken us by his son, whom he appeared, hear all things, and through him he made the universe. So God was speaking through nature. God was speaking through laws. God was speaking through prophets. But the human, but mankind is not able to have a fellowship and a relationship with Christ. So God wants a fellowship. God wants a union with mankind. He was approached by the law. The law was given to the Moses. Not dis, 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 disintegrated God with man, but he, the Lord was sent through Moses with a people of Israel know the personality of God and to near to him. But the human heart was so bitter and rebel, so he were far from the God. So God was speaking. Last time, when we have in the Mohoko, when we evangelize one-to-one, -one, I encounter many people. They will say to me, I'm born again. They say to me, I'm a Christian. Mostly in July, the Ethiopian mission, you will experience also the same, relatively the same thing. I want to ask a person, say, Oh, I know Christ. I know God. If a person say, I know God, I want to make sure that he knows Jesus intentionally. Because without Jesus, anyone cannot able to know the living God. Hallelujah. Let's read. Let's read from the Bible. John chapter 1 verse 18. Through the Amplifier translation. No man has ever seen God at any time. It was a shocking. Can you imagine Adam? Can you imagine Moses? Can you imagine Abraham? When the Bible says, No man has ever seen God at any time. It means that the sheriff, the angels, any creation in the heavens, they even though, they don't have a relation. No, no. They have no a capacity to see him. When you say, now I know the living God. What the meaning? When a person say, I know God. What the meaning? Because the Bible says, that no man has ever seen God at any time. Because God is the holy. 
and God is a light. No one can ever just approach him. Because of the angels of cherub, he hold the throne of God. But he never see him God. So the Bible says, so that the Paul was praying one thing. They know Christ intentionally and intimately. And say, the only unique son or the only begotten God who is in Bonson, the intensive presence of the Father, he heart declared him. So that Jesus is the ultimate revelation of the Lord. Jesus is the ultimate representation and revelation of God. Without knowing Jesus Christ, no one will able to understand the Father. So Paul was praying for this community, this Ephesians. So that the spirit that is indicated that the Holy Spirit that we reveal as a wisdom... And revelation. So this, the precious Holy Spirit. And imagine the Holy Spirit is here to reveal Christ. He's not here for, <laughs> for other things. He is the one, the true revealing of the Lord Christ. Without the Holy Spirit, we don't know Christ. We don't know Christ, we don't know the Father. Three things was there. Jesus revealed him. So that there was there was God at the beginning. But he wanted to God was trying to have a connection with the human mankind. But man is unable to have this relationship. So when Jesus come, so now we know the Lord because Jesus revealed God. Unseen God becomes seen. Untouchable God become touchable. The God who know everything, now he become learning the language of Hebrew. The God, the God who hold the universe, he is become the baby in the womb of Mary. The unseen God become visible. So Jesus revealed him. Jesus brought him out. Now God is being seen. So the heavens declare the glory of God. You see, the creation declare the presence and the glory of God. But when Jesus revealed the Father, we can how we can now see, we can have the capacity to see the Father. So that one of the disciples just asked him, Jesus. Please, Jesus, let us see the Father. And Jesus says, still you don't see me? If anyone can see me, you see the Father. The third one is, it's about now, now Jesus interpret being understandable. So now we understand God. It's a tricky, I want to ex. I want to give you an example. What is the meaning of interpretation means? Means that, for example, media will come. Will come. Now, I speak in Amharic. And you see how the Lord was doing in Christ.
God was speaking like this. We don't know. God was speaking. You know that. I'm speaking. You don't know what to speak. So the universe was telling something. We don't know. You, you see the person can worship the, 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 the mountains. Because he knows something was telling him. He knows there is God. But he don't know it. So he go to the mountains. He go to the valley. He go to the mosque. He, do, he go to a lot of things. Because everybody knows. That now the God was speaking. But it is like a tongue. No one understand it. So in the laws it was speaking. No one understand him. In the prophet it was speaking. No one understand the Lord. Now look, and now listen. And it's not true, not true. That's not true. Now she interpreted the prophet. How are you? How was everything? <laughs> she say that, you know, okay, we are fine. We are fine. Like this, Jesus was interpreted the unseen God to be seen. Now you see the Holy Spirit is the one who reveal the who, who reveal the Messiah, who reveal Jesus. If we understand Jesus, we will understand the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that Paul was praying for this church so that the Holy Spirit revealed the Christ in them. Why? Because without Christ, no one understands the will of God. No one understands the will of God. So that Jesus interpreted for us. Now, when God speaks, we understand. It, was, it, re, it is really amazing. When now the Lord speaks, we understand. Why? There is an interpreter. Hallelujah. Oh, pray the Lord, hallelujah. He is the interpreter. So he interpreted that for us. Now we understand. Now when God speaks, we know he's speaking. So one, so that the other one is the outcome of this Thanksgiving prayer. What is the outcome? So we see what is the motive of Paul praying for the Ephesians is the first thing he heard about their face. He heard about the love. Oh, so he will, he will on the knee, he will pray for them day and night, day and night. So we ask Paul, what was you are praying for them? And he will say that I will pray for them to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Oh, Paul, what is the meaning of the spirit of wisdom and revelation? It is the Holy Spirit that reveal Christ. What is the importance of revealing Christ? Because without Christ, no one understands the Father. So that he prayed for us. He prayed for them about the revealing of the Holy Spirit. So what was the intensive prayer in the Paul? The outcome of that prayer. So, the prayer of Paul for the efficient people was God who opened the eyes of their heart. It is about enlightenment. Let me share you something. The Isaac Newton who discovered the gravity he does not invent the gravity. He discovered the gravity. Means that gravity is existed before the Isaac Newton. So, but Isaac Newton had a lot of calculation. He discovered. It's not invented. So there is something. But this experimental guy do a lot of mathematics and physics. So he discovered there is a gravity, 9.8 meter per second. There is, he revealed it. So Paul was praying about the enlightenment. Because of God, the Christ was revealed. Now we don't pray to reveal the new Christ. No, 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 no. There is a, a revealing Christ. That's revealing the gospel we have. 
the full gospel. But now Paul was praying about it. Enlightenment. There is the word when the spirit touch it, it will enlighten. So three basic things he was praying for this community. The first one is to know the hope which we are called. What is the hope of we are called on? I want to ask you that if anyone in this congregation who received Christ as his personal as a personal time through the street means that you you don't know that person in ministry on the streets and you accept Jesus as personal savior if anyone they, if anyone who have receiving Jesus when a person minister him on the street is there anyone here Okay, is anyone who has received Jesus Christ as personal savior through his friends, through consistent counseling, his friends, aunts, cousins, who this is anyone? He does not know Jesus as personal as, at the beginning, but he was receiving Jesus through his family, uh, through his just friends, cousins, aunts. Is anyone? Is there anyone? You are one person, two, three. Okay. So mostly, the whole are, we are born through the Christian family. Yeah? That's a serious question I want to ask you. Because now Paul was praying about what is the significance of the Lord that call us from the darkness. You see, when we are born in the Christian family, we don't value about the calling. We don't value how Jesus was called us from the, from the, the, from the darkness. I remember one of my friends, he's an Ethiopian friend, and he said to me that, oh, Habtish, I don't deserve to go to hell. And he said, why? Because I'm born in Christian family. I don't, I don't have a drug. I don't have a lot of wrong behaviors. I don't have, I'm a good person. I don't steal. I don't, I have good person. You see, now we see we deserve the, we, we deserve the heavens because of what we did. But Paul says, remember, because when the spirit comes, you will notice how the Lord was calling you from the darkness. Unless otherwise, everybody will go. Because when the family chain is a Christian, he will be a Christian. But he does not discover what is the Lord was doing for him. The first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 is a brother. Think of what you were when you are called. Remember that calling. Not many of you are wise by the human standard. You don't even qualify the human standard. You don't even qualify the human standard. <laughs> Let me share you something. The friend of mine, he have a friend in his village. And he says, at, at, at the midday, at, at one, he was around with charcoals. And he was having a war around charcoal, charcoals. And there is a fire and he is sitting at the day in 1 p.m. So the friend of mine, he asked him, what's wrong with you? What is, why, why, why you are near to the fire? He are saying that, I want to experience hell. <laughs> I want to experience hell. So many people expected that. What is the meaning of hell? What is hell? You see, so Paul seriously pray about, remember, so that, brother, you don't qualify the human standard. Not many of influence, not many was a noble birth, but God chose the foolish thing of this world like us to shame the wise. God chose the weak thing of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lost thing of this world that is disperser things. And things that are not. 
to nullify the things that are so no one may boost before him. No one say, I did. I encounter one, one, one guy in, in Morocco and he says, no, 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 I will go to heaven. Heaven, I says, what is your good? I, I do good thing, he says. I do good thing because of my goodness. And I ask him, from the beginning of the morning, is there any bad thing you do? And he's doing chat. And he say, I'm, I'm good to go to heaven. I'm good, he says. So, we don't qualify. We don't qualify. But there is a divine call. So when the Holy Spirit comes, the spirit of revelation and wisdom comes, she will reveal, she will ignite it, she will, yeah, 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 yeah. She will show us what is the amazing call we have. What is the significance to be a Christian? Oh, what is the significance to be a Christian? And prayer was to know the, the richness of his inheritance. place where we don't see the mercy of God what is the most horrifying thing in the hell I don't think it is a fire I don't think it is a snake I don't think even though it is a devil because devil is there to be punished not to pay look the devil is the one who will be punished on the hell not he the one who punish the other person he the one who be punished not he is the one who punished the others. So hell, the disaster and the, the, the worried picture of hell is a place when we don't see the mercy of God. The only place that is revealed. I, 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 I admitted that the only place I see in the Bible was that face of God is in the Calvary from 12 from 1 to 12 to 3. When everything become dark. At that time you see. The wrath of God. So hell is the place. Where we don't see the mercy of God. Even though today. You become an atheist. And you say. I don't believe in God. And you are so wondering. And you are so happy. About the sunrise and sunset. In the hell there is no indication of the mercy of God. There is no indication of the mercy of God. So, there is a herod. There is inheritance. So, the first Corinthians 2, chapter 2, verse 9 says, Whoever it is written, however it is written, no eye, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has convinced what God has prepared. For those who loved him. There is a place. Hallelujah. There is a place. When the Holy Spirit comes. Now heaven become real. It's not become curse. Now we, we, we will assure you that. So when the Spirit comes. It will reveal. And it will, it will test us. It will tell us. About the real of the inheritance. The third one is. To know the power of resurrection. Before we conclude, 
I want to share you about five minutes only. So Paul, he says, I pray. To know your calling, I am praying that. To know your inheritance, I am praying for you. To know the power of resurrection. What do you think? Do you think the cosmos, when God created the cosmos, the universe, so he used the power. When the Bible says the power that is revealed in the creation that God created is, the greatest power that is revealed, his strength is when he rose Jesus from the dead. The power of resurrection is the revealing the highest power of God that is revealing in the body. Due to Christ raised from the dead, his name become all above others' names. Hallelujah. Anything that have a name, any, anything, anything that have a name, even though in the heavens, it was bound by the name of Jesus. Because now the father exalted the name of Jesus. Due to the resurrection. No one is able to skip and defeat the death. So death is powerful. You see death is powerful. No one is kept from the death. A Lazarus. A Lazarus. It was die, and Jesus rose up Lazarus, and he spent a lot of time, and he died. Anyone is under days, but Jesus, hallelujah, is risen, and he's resurrected. So the power of resurrection is when the Holy Spirit reveals it, and they will show that. It's a wonderful. So, the conclusion of Paul's prayer. So, because when Paul concluded, so Jesus, when he exalted and he had all authorities, all names, nothing above about his name. So every name was bound to the name of Jesus. So Jesus, after he exalted, after he is resurrected, he, did he go to the heavens and enjoy only? No. The Bible, the Paul was concluded this chapter, he says. Oh, hallelujah. So God put all authorities and power to Jesus Christ. No one will be more or equivalent to him. But Jesus is not receiving this all authority. And sided on the throne. Rather than become the head of the church. Now he become the head of the church. Now the church is a tool. An applicable format. To practice the authority. A power. Dominion. Of that the Christ can be due on this earth. Now. Christ will be the head of the church. Now the church using the body of God Christ will practically do the authority, do the dominion that, that the church can govern the kingdom of God. So church is the fundamental tool for executing the work of God through the church. Now the church dominated Authorize his kingdom in this world. You are a vessel. So that God is giving you an opportunity. So Paul was praying for that. You Ephesians church. Rose up. And understand one thing. Now God the Christ. Is your, it is the head of the church. You are the vessels. So that the Lord Jesus Christ can be used you and functional tool in the kingdom of God. So you have an apart, 
and a party. You have an, a, a capacity to participate in the kingdom of God because you are now the vessel of the church. You are the body of the church. So Paul was praying for this church about thanksgiving that the Holy Spirit revealed Jesus. I want to ask you before we finish because I, I think we, I call pastor and he will talk us about the discussion points. But now the church now me and you all we are we are a vessel in the kingdom of God. So Paul was praying for that church to understand their identity, to understand their character that they can receive from Christ because now Christ is exalted. Christ become a dominion here of receiving the authority. The name is above every name, but he is not sitting on his throne only, but he become the the, the head of the church now now God was functioning everything through the church through me and you so in this congregation no one is left behind no one is ever left behind we are all are the vessels that the Lord can use us for his kingdom work so whatever you have in, in, in profession so I, I, I suggest you one thing and I finish. Because we challenge, we talk with pastor and I challenge you. As a ministry in Ethiopia and we are trying to do is encouraging every professional should be a mission field. So whatever you have, if you have a profession, if you have a college students, university students, you are a potential professionals, I think after finishing the service, we, will, we want to talk to you. We want to talk to you. So we can have a, a program that is a Elihu Global Mission Seminary. We have a seminary. So we can help you that to find out the purpose of God in your life, in your profession. There is a training. You can just sign on it. So easily we can just help you that to find out your purpose. While you are working, you become a missionary. While you are working, you become a vessel for using the kingdom of God. So Paul was praying for this church is to define, to understand their identity through Christ. If they know Christ and if they know what Christ did on the cross and if they accept it and they can have a functionality in the kingdom of God. So we challenge you. We challenge you that after this service, if you are if you're anyone interested, we can just connect it and talk to you about different kinds of courses. So that will be helpful. Pray the Lord. Let us stand and pray. Let us pray, Father Jesus. I give you some minutes. Father Jesus, I, I want to know, I want to know the Holy Spirit. Father Jesus, we pray. Hey, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I need you encounter. Everyone say, everyone shout, everyone pray. Small minute, Father, I need the encounter. I need the experience. I don't, need, I don't want to talk. Just simply, I want to experience. I want to know the calling. I want to know the inheritance. I want to know the resurrection. I want to know, Father, I want to encounter. I want to encounter. I want to experience. I don't want to listen. I don't want to, I don't want to listen a sermon. But I want to, I want to encounter. I want to encounter, Father Jesus. I want to encounter.
there is the Holy Spirit praying. There is the Spirit, hallelujah. I sense it, Alajanta. Ividi Kalios, Eleventa Rabul Alpadiaka. He will encounter you. There is the Spirit moving, the Holy Spirit. Touch Father Jesus. Spirit. Father, I, we want to experience the Spirit. We want to experience the resurrection. We want to experience the resurrection power. We want to, we, we do. Father Jesus, we hate just sitting and listening only sermon. We no, no, no. Father, we want to experience. We want to know your person. We want to know you in person. Workmanship. Poema. That word workmanship means perfect work of God. His handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. As we conclude, I want us to pray that each one of us will walk in the works 
that God prepared for you beforehand. There is a purpose that God had for you before you came into this earth. Before you were born in your mother's womb, there is a purpose. So I want all of us to pray and to connect and to ask that the Holy Spirit will cause us to understand our calling, to understand who we are in Him. Lord, that's the reason you brought us together during this season. You brought us during this season to know who we are in you. You are saying great things about our lives. Great things are spoken of you, O city of God. Great things are spoken of us. And we are going to walk in the calling that you are calling us, Almighty God. We want to know the power of your resurrection. We want to encounter you at the experience. We want to see blind eyes open. We want to see deaf ears open. We want to see sicknesses go. We want to see the grace of God manifested in our generation. We want to see young people come to Christ in thousands, in multitudes. That's why we are on earth to live and to move and to have our being in the Holy Spirit to show forth the excellences, the praises of our God in this crooked and perverse generation. Come on, pray. Pray that the Lord will use you. Ask the Lord to use you. Tell him, Father, use me. Use me in my profession. Use me in my ministry. Use me in my family. Use me in this country. Use me as a voice in the world. Come on, Father, use us. Use the experience. We present it in your hand. We present ourselves, our lives to you. Use us, oh God. Cause us to mount up with wings as eagles. Cause us to live forth the powers and the grace that you had for us, oh God. That's our desire. We are tired of living like chicken. We are tired of living like mere men. You created us with a divine calling and we want to fulfill it in the name of Jesus. We worship you. We exalt you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this season. We thank you for your power. And we thank you that you love us. We praise you. We lift you up. We pray that what you want to do in our midst this season will be revealed. We love you. We speak a blessing of our Aptam. And we pray that Lord you will continue to use him mightily for the honor and glory of your name. We pray the Lord you will minister through his life in a powerful way. I pray for his ministry, the Lord you will cause it to flourish and to touch many all over the world. May you be exalted and may you be magnified. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray, trusting and believing. And everybody say, come on at the count of three, give a shout to Jesus. One, two, three, praise him. Father, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Tunaendelea vizuri. Next week tunaendelea na chapter 2 talking about alive in Christ. Tell our neighbor alive in Christ. Alive in Christ. Tunamalizia hapo